Good morning to everyone. I'm so thrilled to join you today as we celebrate our successes during this unprecedented year. I'd like to begin by congratulating our colleagues at No Kid Hungry North Carolina for convening the 10th annual Hunger Leaders Conference. It's hard to believe it's been 10 years since the first conference. We look forward to so many more to come. You know, this conference is so unique. It's become a catalyst in helping us reimagine a world in which child hunger no longer exists. The energy, the ideas, the innovation that resonates from this conference have a ripple effect and it helps us to create momentum that shapes our work throughout the year. Uh, what a great title for our opening su uh, session, Successes from Pivoting in a Crisis. You know, pivot is the perfect word to describe what's transpired over this year. Schools and community partners have pivoted or, or transitioned to adapt to a constantly changing, often unpredictable environment. In the school and community nutrition environment, so many conditions have changed. The federal regulations have changed. The food products have changed. Delivery models have changed. Staffing has changed. And of course, as Gerald mentioned earlier, the weather has changed, which is sm no small thing in our business. But one thing has not changed our genuine desire to feed kids. You know, as I thought about the word pivot, I fondly remembered my days of high school and collegiate basketball. Now, pivot meant moving one foot without moving the other, keeping one foot firmly planted at all times. And I think that's what we've done. As a community of hunger advocates, we've kept ourselves focused firmly planted on the need to do all we could to provide meals to children while constantly changing how we go about achieving that goal. And friends, believe me, it takes coordination to pivot well as we've all learned this year. And as I gave more thought to this interesting word pivot, my thoughts moved to a, a derivation of the word, pivotal. And I was reminded that pivotal means a, a person or a thing that is of great importance to someone else. That, my friends, describes each of you because you have been and continue to be pivotal in the lives of the children you serve. You know their faces, you see their smiles, you and your teams provided food every day, food they would not have had otherwise were it not for you. You were and continue to be their safety net Yes, you make a difference every day in their lives. And as a community and a state, we cannot thank you enough for all you have done and will continue to do to ensure our children have access to food that supports and sustains them. Now, our colleagues at No Kid Hungary have asked me to set the table, so to speak, for our conference by describing how we've pivoted by the numbers. So let's consider how some of the numbers have described our successes in this year. Let's start with uh, number nine, as in March 9, the date the Department of Public Instruction submitted its first waiver to the U.S. Department of Agriculture to allow for non-congregate meals to be available to our children. Or how about the number 14, the date on which our governor issued an executive order that closed schools to students as a means of coordinating our state's public health response to COVID-19. Or 48, the number of hours it took for school nutrition directors to pivot from providing meals to students at school to providing them as grab and go or curbside pickup or transporting them to students in yellow school buses or making them available in meal bundles. Or how about the number 60? 60, as in the percent of students enrolled in North Carolina's public schools, who at the time of school closure due to the pandemic, were dependent upon meals every day at school for their primary source of food and nutrition. Or 115, the number of school food authorities that pivoted, yes, literally did an about face to transition from the National School Lunch Program to the Summer Food Service Program in order to provide meals to students under the new normal that required social distancing, face coverings, and hand sanitizers. Or how about this number, 21,000, the number of school buses that were converted to food trucks in order to deliver meals to children at the height of the pandemic. Or 38, the number of community organizations that stepped up to become sponsors in the summer nutrition program to support school districts and charter schools in providing meals to children in their communities. And let's not forget, 
3,223. That's the number of meal sites throughout the state. And of course, who can forget the numbers 877-877. That's the number to which parents could text to find locations for free meals for their children in the communities. Or one half million. The average number of meals served to children every day during the first 90 days of school closure. Or 68. <laughs> the number of hours over the past year school nutrition directors have spent in COVID-19 Wednesday webinars to learn about new and evolving federal regulations or best practices or other pandemic success strategies. Or the number 74. The number of federal waivers requested and received from the U.S. Department of Agriculture since March to allow us to successfully pivot to provide those meals to students using such a wide variety of innovative delivery strategies. We are indebted to the USDA for their unprecedented, uh, unprecedented waiver authority. Or the number three, the number of guiding principles that have been our beacon during this pandemic. Those include providing meals for as many food insecure children as possible, doing so as safely as possible, and in a manner that supports program sustainability and integrity. You've heard those words before many times. Or 75 million, as in $75 million appropriated by the North Carolina General Assembly to support the sustainability of the school nutrition programs during the pandemic. And let's not forget this one, 52. The number of school nutrition programs that have subsequently been audited to document the allowable use of those funds, all in the name of program integrity, and again, You've done an amazing job. Or how about this number, 940,000, the number of economically disadvantaged students in our state who are eligible now to receive Pandemic Emergency Food Assistance Benefits, or PEBT. Those benefits should be rolling out in the next few days. Or 1,050, the number of conference attendees who are coming together for the Child Hunger Leaders Conference today and tomorrow to take action to address and hopefully make huge strides to eliminate child hunger in our state. And perhaps the most important number, the number one, as in the power of one voice, your voice, advocating for children who cannot advocate for themselves. Oh, and by the way, there's one more number I want you to keep on your radar screen. It's the number 117, as in the 117th Congress, where it's very likely the child nutrition programs will undergo reauthorization this year. It's been over 10 years since those programs were reauthorized and this may be our year. So let's end with this number and a commitment to help our decision makers recognize the importance of making universal free meals or meals at no cost to children available to all students as part of their instructional day as a means of eliminating child hunger while nourishing children to achieve their best at school. These are just a few of the numbers that tell the very compelling story of how one state, our state, pivoted to meet the needs of its most food insecure, vulnerable children during the pandemic. There will be many more important numbers to come throughout the day and tomorrow. And those numbers will continue to tell the story about how we have and will continue to pivot as often as needed to do what we in this profession do best, nourish the bodies, minds, souls, and spirits of the children we're privileged to serve every day.